India is the largest country in South Asia. It's the seventh largest country on the earth. It's the second most populous country after China. India is the biggest democracy in the world. After independence, India has made rapid progress in every field. Science, information technology, agriculture, industry, commerce, and whatnot. India has also contributed significantly to the making of the world history. Today, we will learn the first lesson of geography of class 9th, India, size and location. For our convenience, we will divide the lesson into six parts and learn them. They are latitudes and longitudes, India's size, India's location, India and its neighbors, strategic position of India at the head of Indian Ocean, and the significance of mountain passes in ancient times. Let's first recapitulate latitudes and longitudes that you have learned in one of the lower classes. Milky Way is just one of the 100 billion galaxies that make up our universe. And in this Milky Way, there are more than 100 billion stars, out of which the Sun is one. Around it revolve eight planets, and the third one is our planet, the Earth. The Earth is a huge planet. How do we find out where exactly a given place is located? Suppose you go to Google Earth and search for India. How does Google show India on the globe? Suppose you wish to locate our school in Google Earth. How does Google take you to the exact location? Suppose an aeroplane starts from Bengaluru to New Delhi and from there to Kolkata and eventually reaches Mumbai. How does the pilot know which route to take in the sky? How could the Indian Air Force precisely locate the terrorist camp at Balakot in Pakistan and destroy it? The answer is, they all have the knowledge of latitudes and longitudes. Latitudes and longitudes are imaginary lines drawn on the earth. Latitudes are horizontal lines, whereas longitudes are vertical lines. Latitudes are parallel to the equator and the equator itself is a latitude, that is, zero degree latitude. There are totally 180 latitudes besides the equator, 90 in the northern hemisphere and 90 in the southern hemisphere. Latitudes help in dividing zones on the globe, like temperate zone and the tropical zone. Longitudes help in defining date and time on the earth. They extend to 180 degree east to 180 degree west of the prime meridian. There are 360 longitudes in total. There is a time gap of 4 minutes between the two longitudes. Together, latitudes and longitudes help in locating a place and the time of that place. Now, let's learn India's size and location. The equator divides the Earth into Southern Hemisphere and the Northern Hemisphere. The Prime Meridian divides the Earth into the Western Hemisphere and the Eastern Hemisphere. The equator and the Prime Meridian create four divisions. India lies completely in the Northeastern Hemisphere. The Tropic of Cancer passes through India cutting India into almost two equal halves. India has a total area of 3.28 million square kilometers. It occupies 2.4% of the total geographical area of the Earth. There are Yangfold Mountains in the north, the northwest and the east of India. From about 22 degree latitude, India begins to taper, creating a bay and a sea. India has a land boundary of 15,200 kilometers, including that of island groups, 
The length of India's coastline is 7516.6 kilometers. Now let's learn about our neighbors. Pakistan and Afghanistan lie to the northwest of India. Nepal, China and Bhutan are there to the north and Myanmar and Bangladesh to the east. Sri Lanka and Maldives are our island neighbors present in the Indian Ocean to the south. Let's move on and study India's latitudinal and longitudinal extent. Watch the video carefully. You have observed that the mainland of India extends from 8 degrees 4 minutes north to 37 degrees 6 minutes north. If you bring in our island groups into picture, India extends from 6 degrees 45 minutes north to 37 degrees 6 minutes north. Longitudinally, India extends from 68 degrees 7 minutes east to 97 degrees 25 minutes east. The Tropic of Cancer, 23 degrees 30 minutes north passes through India. By the way, all that you are watching now are the map items that you should learn. You should not only be able to identify them in the map, but also be able to locate and label them in the map. Suppose A, B, C, D, E, F and G are different places on a very large area and they are apart by one degree longitude as shown in the image. We know that there is a time difference of 4 minutes between two longitudes. When the sun shines overhead of A, the time there is 12 noon. What is the time in place B? You guessed it right. It is 4 minutes to 12 or 11.56 am. The time in C is 8 minutes to 12 or 11.52 am. These are called local times. As the sun moves from east to west, the local time in these places changes. Observe the change in time keenly. Have you observed that at any given point in time, there is a time gap of 24 minutes between A and G? The difference is there because local time varies from place to place. This can create confusion in big countries. Take our country for instance. It extends from 68 degrees 7 minutes east longitude to 97 degrees 25 minutes east longitude. The longitudinal extent of India is about 30 degrees. The difference between the two extreme longitudes of India is about 2 hours. This gives rise to a problem. For example, if the local time in Arunachal Pradesh is 7 a.m., it is still 5 a.m. in Gujarat. How is this problem overcome? The mid-longitude of India is 82 degrees 30 minutes. The time on this longitude is taken as the standard time of India. In other words, the time on this longitude is the Indian standard time. Everybody in India, irrespective of where they live, follow this time. Bigger countries like the USA, Canada and Australia have many time zones. Find out how many time zones those big countries have. Do you know, the northeastern states of India had been demanding a separate time zone for long. Their demand was turned down by the union government only recently. Read this newspaper report.
Let's learn how India enjoys strategic position at the head of the Indian Ocean. Indian landmass is centrally located between the West and the East Asia. Look at the long coastline that India has. This helps India developing close contact with Europe, West Asia and Africa in the West from the West Coast and East Asian countries from the East Coast. The Trans-Indian Sea routes connect Europe in the West and the East Asian countries. No other country in South Asia has so long a coastline as India has. No other country enjoys such a predominant position in South Asia as India does. Quite rightly, the ocean to the south of India is named as the Indian Ocean. Rakesh Sharma was the first Indian to journey into space. This is what he said after he spoke to the then Prime Minister of India, Indira Gandhi. You will also watch the real conversation between the two. ऊपर से भारत कैसा दिखता है आपको जी मैं बगैर किसी झिझक के कह सकता हूँ सारे जहाज से अच्छा इंडिया इंडी इट लुक्स सारे जहाज से अच्छा डू यू अग्री चिल्ड्रन Now let's learn how India established contact with the outside world in ancient times. Indians have been seafaring people and are great migrants. But in ancient times, India's contact with the outside world had been through land routes first. Sea routes followed later. Mountain passes in the Himalayas facilitated the movement of people, goods and ideas. Mountain passes are low-lying areas amidst high peaks. The ideas of Upanishads, Ramayana and Mahabharata and the stories of Panchatantra reached many parts of the world through these mountain passes. So did Indian numerals and decimal systems. Indian spices and muslin followed the same route to reach the outside world. Let's see how the exchange of ideas influenced India. The influence of Greek architecture can be seen in many parts of India. Similarly, we can see the influence of Persian architecture in the forms of minarets and domes. In this lesson, we have learned the significance of latitudes and longitudes and India's size and location. We also have learned the strategic significance that India enjoys at the head of the Indian Ocean. We concluded the lesson learning the significance of mountain passes in the exchange of goods and ideas with the outside world. Map items that you should learn in this lesson include all the major latitudes and longitudes of India. You should also be able to identify and locate and label all the states and union territories of India with their capital cities. Hope you are benefited by this lesson. See you again.